it's Marissa Kotze from the Kotze Mortgage Team. I have my sister here today. Hello. Part, side two of the <laughs> Kotze Mortgage Team. The amazing one, Stephanie Kotze. Um, today, we are gonna be talking, just conversing, about a topic that everybody keeps talking about, which is friggin' variable rates and fixed rates and rising rates. Inflation. Yeah. All the shit that everybody's terrified about that you see in the media right now. And yes. yes, it's crazy, but like we have some strong viewpoints. And if you know us, you know that we have strong viewpoints in general. Yes. Um, so, so yeah, so like disclaimer to begin is like, I, me personally, I'm very pro variable rate. Yes. Um, I can see the value of a fixed rate but in general, I'm pretty pro variable. So that's obviously where a lot of this conversation is gonna be like pushed from, not just from my own viewpoint, but obviously like from a lot of research yeah, and historically, yeah. like, statistics, <laughs> like we're not coming out of nowhere and I'm just like picking at being like, yep, yeah, I'm team variable. Yeah. It's like, no, I've actually done some research and I've <laughs> read a lot of shit and uh, it's not out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like Steph feels the same. Yeah, so I, honestly, I'm in a fixed rate. When I bought my house, <laughs> yeah, I was very, very broke. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna stick to this. Rates were going down. This is so stupid. She didn't I, know that they were gonna go but down. I, you know what? The, the thing is, is that I promote variable. I've been in this business for like, well, gosh, 11, 12 years. Yeah. And variable has always won. Yeah. Like, always. Always. <laughs> always. And then when I got my own mortgage, <laughs> I was like, wow, rates are under 3%. I can get 2.99. <laughs> and uh, I locked in because... It's a moment of weakness. Yeah, we honestly, it was just we had like no money. <laughs> yeah. I just really badly wanted to get into the market, and um, which was great, but definitely if I went variable, I would have saved a lot of money. <laughs> yup, yup. Um, and then, you know, even with variable rates going up, I still would be in the positive with how much I've saved because at the start of your mortgage, that is the highest amount of interest you're paying on that principal. The principal is at its highest. Yeah, man. So yeah. Um, you <laughs> look variable. And went variable. I'm like, close my eyes. You're saying the rates are going up. I don't care. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. And, yeah. And that statistics. was only, what, 2021. So we knew yeah. at some point the rates were going to go up. Mm -hmm. We knew that. 100%. And we were like, yeah, let's go variable. And yeah. I just checked yesterday, your rate is prime minus 70. So we have clients that have prime minus 1.25, 1.4, that are stressing about the very Yes. Rate. So this is the thing, is every time we get an email that's like, oh my God, Marissa, should I lock in my rate? Oh my God, what's going on? And I'm like, my immediate is like, absolutely not. Like, <laughs> absolutely not, stop it close your eyes, don't look at the news, but I, I don't say that, you know, we, I, I'm really more tender. <laughs> I mean, I definitely still say no, don't do that, but also let's have a conversation. Yeah, let's find out what you need specifically, yeah. what you're looking like. Yeah. And honestly, I think almost all our conversations end up being that they decide not to lock yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. Um, because in reality, you were still saving money as so much money. As the Bank of Canada is increasing, which they're gonna follow the Fed, and yeah. Jan uh, July thirteenth, they are going to for sure increase yes. it by seventy-five bips. Yeah. So that is three quarters of a percent. It is. And still the rates are gonna be better. And yeah. how long is it going? So even Let's say, let's say the overnight rate goes up to three percent. They're trying right. to get it to three percent. They say two point five to three percent. Let's say that the Bank of Canada yeah. is going to get it to three percent. Yeah. So that would probably mean that most people will probably, if they chose to lock in, 
then yes, for that time being where that variable is higher, yeah, yes, you'd save a little bit of money. But getting with the variable rate, getting there, you yes. spent more. And then on yep. the back end, where we're hearing likely 2024, yeah, they'll probably start coming back down. Yeah, and you're still locked in that rate. Yeah, where people that stuck, you know, wave the rate, ride, ride the wave, Thank ride you. the wave. <laughs> Which is also what I say to everyone. I'm like, buckle up and let's ride the wave. Yeah, You're fine. It's gonna come back down, and over your five years or three years left, you have or yeah. whatever, um, you will likely. You're net positive. Yeah, you are. And, and historically speaking, yeah. people in variable have been net positive. Why yeah. it's lower is because you have that fluctuation. Yes. And yes. It's scary and stressful. Yeah. But you know, hey, there's that fluctuation that can happen. Or, hey, let's just jump up my payments by $800 a month right away. Yeah. Why would I do that? Yeah. yeah, and pay more interest. And and so, like, just to go back to, like, the historically thing, which is something that, like, when I learned this, I thought was pretty intense, was um, that, like, statistically or historically, variable rates have consistently outperformed fixed rates since World War II. <laughs> that means that even in the 70s and 80s, in the fucking madness of that, and then also in 2008, variable rates still, over that time period that you had that mortgage, you that, meant, that means that over time, you saved more being in that variable rate, riding the wave of the fluctuations, you saved more than if you had locked in at a fixed rate. Yeah. So to me, that's just like, it's almost like a no-brainer. Like, why would I ever, go into a fixed rate if it's like over that long term you most likely will always be saving money because every month like stephanie was saying is like if you are in a variable rate of let's say 2.5 percent i'm just pulling out numbers 2.5 percent today or let's say a year ago when you got got it 2.5 percent and let's say now the rates have gone up you're at three percent but you for every month that you've been in that variable rate you've been saving on interest costs versus what you would have locked in at at that time like let's say it was three percent at that time when you did the 2.5 so every month that you're in a lower interest rate you're saving money yeah. so then if the variable rate somehow becomes higher than the fixed rate let's say for three six five ten months that's suddenly, okay, now you're paying more than the fixed rate, but you've had a year and a half of lower interest costs. And that's where we mean of like, that you become net positive because that higher cost that you're suddenly paying is not, you're now, it's not now costing you more. It's now just eating into those savings that you made over the past year. So. That's why we're like, it's not that it's suddenly costing you more. It's just you're saving less versus a person who locks in at a fixed rate and then chooses to pay a lot more interest over the entire life of their mortgage. Yeah, right away. Yeah. And, yeah. and the thing is like, which again, this is on the other side is like, I'm never going to tell people a hundred percent go into a variable rate. No. I'm always going to be like, for me, it comes down to your anxiety and stress. If riding these waves and feeling these fluctuations, no matter how much information I give you, if that's going to cause you anxiety or, or you're going to le lose sleep over it, then go into a fixed rate. Like there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's, it's really up to you to make that decision on what's going to make you feel most comfortable. Yeah. And like, yeah, screw it. Will you end up paying more? But is it going to be a better peace of mind? Yeah. Then do that. Yeah. Like that's the better choice. No matter how much we're like pro variable, the better choice is whatever is gonna give you peace of mind. Yes. Yeah. Um, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then, just want to talk about really quickly about how, like, let's say a couple years ago you locked in at a really awesome, you know, two point eight percent fixed rate. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome but that Amazing. was happening yeah and now down the road rates are going to be higher you're yeah. going to be renewing and have to pay a higher rate yep 
what does that look like? Can you afford it? That type of thing. I know yes. a lot of people are discussing. I think Many Life put out a survey that was right. like one in four homeowners Ugh. is going to have to sell their house. The reality is, is that these these surveys that are happening yes. are based on our emotions and based 100%. on yeah. Of course, if you know, I have to pay an extra, you know. Eight hundred dollars a month than what I have been. Yeah, I'm stressing about that. But the reality <laughs> is, is that it's only because it's uncomfortable. Because yeah. I was qualified at five point two five, and yeah. I have to be able to afford that. And you can only use what like thirty nine percent of your income yeah. in order. So you still have income on top of what you're yeah. paying your mortgage for. Yeah. Um, and your housing yeah. costs. The struggle in that is that most people are used to using 50 or more percent of their income on leisure activities, yeah. going out to eat. Whereas now, it's you don't have that luxury anymore. You're yeah. going to have to rearrange your finances yeah. or savings. Like yeah. I mean, right now, they said like, uh, like in Canada, the amount of savings we have in the bank. Per one dollar of debt, I think it's like seven dollars. There's eight. Yeah, this is a, a, much yeah, higher than know, but it yeah. used to be. Um, where it used to be like, I don't know, one to one. It was all. It was like flat. Act. The don't last have the dates yeah. in front of me. The but, last time there was like inflation, they were saying like, because that's oh, what they're yeah, comparing wow. it to a I lot mean, of the times. Is well, like yeah. So last time in well back, if you even look at the like seventies and eighties when rates were like crazy, yeah, which is very comparable to right now because we are just have higher debts, houses cost more. Yeah. So that 13, 16% is the same as us doing 5% right now. Yeah. That's yeah. the same. So yeah. your parents tell you, you didn't live in the eight, 70s, 80s. Trust yeah. me, we're living in it right now. Yeah. <laughs> Be like, yeah, I'll take 10 and 20% if my house costs $10,000. Thanks mom and dad, okay? I mean, it didn't cost $10,000. Okay, $50,000. <laughs> With more than that, but basically, whatever you get it. Obviously, I'm dramatic, but still, <laughs> yeah. I basically, what was I saying? Just uh, oh, the inflation the, and debt. Inflation, and, yeah, debt. So we have a lot more savings because we spent way less on our mortgage costs, our rent costs, or whatever, yeah. our living costs. Yeah, and you know our. Well, even debt like the pandemic nobody was going out so you, everybody's that's yeah, the lines of credits are low so yeah. yeah let's do these renovations let's do everything right now yeah. and and put away savings mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and because we have been able to do that we've gotten used to that yeah and now you're saying oh i can't put away those extra savings mm -hmm. i have to use more money for my living costs yeah. I don't like that. Yeah, that's what people are saying. They're not <laughs> actually going to have yeah. to sell. Yeah, one yeah. that would be for majority of people that are uncomfortable with the increase yeah. in the payments. It would be very silly to sell <laughs> because very much so. Real estate will yes, we'll have a slowdown. We yeah. are having a slowdown right now, but it will continue to go up. And yeah. point about the 70s and 80s, people were spending like crazy and weren't saving a dime. Yeah. So when we increased rates like crazy back then, yeah, everything held, you know, house prices dropped dramatically. Yeah. yeah. It took seven years to come back if you yeah. bought at the peak. Right. But if right. you bought a year before the peak, it was much faster to come back. Right. But let's say you bought at the peak. Yeah. Um, it took seven years to come back. Yeah. Because nobody had savings. Whereas right. now, people have so much in savings, like on average. Yeah, on average. That yes, prices are gonna come down and whatever, but we don't have those other problems of us not having yeah. savings that we can come back yeah. much faster than when it was back in the 70s and yeah. 80s. Yeah. So real estate, don't compare the like dip that we're about no, to have absolutely not. to back then. Absolutely You're still not. Yeah. going to 
do very yeah. well. Yes, if you bought in January and February of this year, yeah. it might take a little bit longer, maybe a couple years, yeah, to come back. But to, yeah, we're not going to get that as thirteen percent decrease mm -hmm. or whatever they're predicting. Yeah, it's not going to take seven yeah. years. It's well, not also take. like your mortgage that you got. Like mortgages are so different than back in the seventies and eighties. Like it's so much harder to get a mortgage these yes. days and it was so That's much true. harder even during the pandemic and during yes. when these housing prices were so inflated. Yeah, that, with like, that stress test. Yeah, yeah that, and, and like that built in so much leeway that like, again, like that just feeds into like Stephanie's. It's like the only reason that you were able to get a mortgage is because you were able to prove that if rates got to 5.25%, you could you could Handle afford that, that. Yeah. you could actually afford that based on your income and your debt load so like that's that's not a lie yeah. that's yeah. that's your reality it yeah. it might not be what you're prepared for because you're that's actually only paying two percent or 1.5 percent but that's why i say is like it's time to rearrange your finances because the numbers told us when we got you the mortgage that you could afford 5.25 percent interest yeah. on your mortgage at and, that time and at that time and your principal is actually less now so your yeah. mortgage balance is even less yeah so your payment is gonna be less than it was yeah. five years ago or yeah. however many years ago that we and qualified you at and income has been going up so over five years majority of people their income has gone up during that time mm -hmm. there's a lot of lenders that will also allow you to extend the amortization back out to yeah. that let's say you took a 25 year amortization yeah. now you're at 20 years a lot of lenders will allow you to bring that back out to 25 years if you really do want to reduce that payment that's, yeah. that's an option too like one in five yeah. homeowners needing to sell is a definitely scare tactic <sighs> and these articles are running like why why insane yeah. insane it actually drives me nuts when i see this shit and i'm like i'm like you are the problem <laughs> but those are the things that like clicks you know it's, it's, it's yeah clickbait yeah freaking but, clickbait and yeah. mortgage clickbait yeah <laughs> And, and it is uncomfortable. It will be uncomfortable because we've been comfortable for so long. Yeah. And um, we've had a surplus. Yeah. We've had this surplus and the market's been madness and everything's been going up, 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 up. Yeah. And like, of course, like when you have such insane increases up, like the market is going to correct at some point. Oh, like we gosh. knew this it was, was coming. It was not sustainable. Like Absolutely that, not. I, was, I was pissed off every day seeing these prices going up <laughs> yeah. the way it was going up. I'm like, yeah. this is just not right it's no. not right it's not and honestly <laughs> I, at the end of the day this is a good thing yeah that prices are coming down it is a good thing we're yes. going to cool off and then of course we're going to start increasing again yeah. at a more sustainable ish yeah rate. yeah yes maybe if you're in toronto it won't cool as much. Yeah. Um. So I mean, for the people that bought, you know, that's great. You're yeah. in Toronto. You have much less to worry about um, than people buying, you know, outside yeah. or you know, cottage country. But at the end of the day, for the last two years, it's gone up like forty percent in some of these places. Yeah. That's that's yeah. stupid. So even if it comes yeah. down you know, 20%, you're still yeah. ahead Yeah, <laughs> over the pandemic. Exactly. Like, you're ahead as people who have bought. You're ahead. It's better for people who are looking to buy. It's like, it's just, it's just better overall. Obviously it's not good if you were planning to buy and flip in a year, like, yeah, sure. But also like, Probably maybe, shouldn't have done yeah, that. maybe we should have done that. Maybe you shouldn't have been a part of the problem, but you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the thing with investors. You're and gaming people. the market. Yeah. Which is the same as what everyone was doing in the stock the, market, the too. The problem so like, with the last two years, mostly were investors. Yes. It was like 40% of the buyers were investors. Like, mm -hmm. which, yes, I'm, I yeah. would love a, you know, rental property or two. Yeah. But, there's people that have a shit ton of rental properties and 
I guess those are the people that yes yeah. might have to sell off one or two um, yeah. because they've already overextended themselves because everything was good and gravy yeah. and you know things were cheap yeah. but uh, in reality the people that have that one or two rental properties yeah, yeah. sure you're maybe not making as much yeah. you know between the housing costs and your monthly payment yeah. versus the rent that you're bringing in. Yeah. But one is a great tax write off. You don't really yeah. want your real estate to be making that much no, money. No, you do not. You and do then, not. And yeah. then two, these prices will still go up. The value of your house 100%. will still go up. So the equity, you know, you're paying down your mortgage. Yes. Like, I mean, even if you end up paying more for the housing than yeah. the rent that you're ga getting yeah. if you hold it for like the next f five three years you're yeah. gonna be in the positive again most likely yeah. like even i mean even our dad back in the 70s or in the 80s when he had rental properties and he ended up selling them all because yeah. he got scared wow. and i mean and my mom too yeah. <laughs> my mom was absolutely not she was very risk averse yes. and my dad was very whatever is the opposite of risk averse yeah. <laughs> um so my dad was like go ho hold it for the long term and my mom was like absolutely not sell yeah. it all this is insane so he sold it all but like yeah. looking back on all those properties i remember he would drive us around and be like oh this i used to own and this i used to own and i'd be like what the fuck yeah. Yeah. why did you not keep it like yes yeah. it would have cost you for like maybe three four years but like in the long term you would have been making bank. <laughs> Seriously, the way like oh Toronto is now. Compared Even if he to sold it like tw 20 years later, right. he would have made so much. Yeah. Like when he shows me some, when he showed me some of the properties, and I was like, yeah, I bought that for like 200,000 and it's like in Rosedale. Yeah. And I'm like, that's Ooh. literally maybe a $3 million yeah. home. I mean, you just kept one rental property. Literally like, one, just one. one. <laughs> the fuck? But yeah, <laughs> but like the point is, it's not all doom and gloom yes yes it's uncomfortable and the reality is you can afford it and then even with right yeah. now with buying yeah it's still a good time to buy mm -hmm. like and people that are all trying to time the market there's no such thing no. as timing the market no it is hard to I mean people try to time the market for <laughs> selling and instead of selling in January they decided we'll wait until March and April yeah and what they're shit out of luck like yeah that's you what timing the market <laughs> will do like I think it's you know if you want to buy within the next year now's the time do your pre-approval start talking to a realtor yeah. start looking at properties yeah. And more properties are coming up on the market and yeah you know so many more properties like if you're not noticing it like you're not getting out enough I feel yeah, like every should I just leave my house the grocery store literally it's crazy literally yeah. I on the block that I park my car on I feel yeah. like there's already been three houses in the last month yeah. I just saw another one get listed but I'm like this sold. Is, like they're you're still listed and sold. like yes you're yeah. not getting this ridiculous honestly it was ridiculous like 50 offers on a house yeah and bidding wars like yeah this is stupid that this is stupid. healthier this, this is, is healthier, healthier though healthier. like more more supply not insane bidding prices i yeah. mean obviously in toronto you're getting still some bidding stuff but like yeah. it's just with more options just comes less frantic buyers yeah and that's so much better for everyone involved you know you're not if you're a seller you're not gonna have a buyer who suddenly can't do the deal because they don't have funding because they were so afraid of it and they just put an offer in so like both sides are benefiting from this yes okay you're not gonna have an insane bidding war and get like in, insane prices for your but house like, but when you buy you won't have to deal with that either. exactly like, it's, it's exactly you know make sure you're working with a realtor that has been working consistently so knows the market has yes. changed and can tell you up front hey this is what your yeah. house is now worth forget about yeah. what you thought 
Yes. This is your reality. Yeah. Like, come back to our reality. Yeah. Um, you know, January, February are long gone. Long, long gone. Long. I think May was down 13% yeah. average yeah. over Canada yeah. since Toronto. February. I saw an Which, article today that Toronto is the only place in Ontario that didn't go down in property values. No, I think it has like 5% now. No. Just recently. I literally just looked today. Really? Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe it's because it could have been the yeah, it could have been the month before. Maybe I don't know. But I didn't look that hard. <laughs> yeah, but but, but, but yeah. Toronto will be much less. Yeah, um, I I don't think it's gonna be like you might not see like decreasing, but like maybe more stagnating. You might oh, see it probably. So I mean, no. I think it's souls. And like, it, but like when is it? Is it talking month over month? Is it talking yeah month over month? Well, that's like right. the so last that's month. right. Yeah. When I said thirteen percent, I'm talking about May versus February. Oh yes yes yes. So yes. so I'm talking yeah. about like the peak versus right now. Right right right. And and that is like Canada as a whole. So like yes. in your GTA and the. GVA is that uh, Vancouver, great, the greater <laughs> Vancouver area, yeah. Yeah. whatever um, it is. Those places will probably be hit the most, right? With, with the decreasing of the you know prices because they right. just have they went up through the roof, right? Um, but yeah, over the peak, it's up gone down thirteen percent year over year. Okay. Yeah. We're still ahead by like yeah. Four percent right right um so yes we'll probably still go on a trend and we might get into the negative later yeah. you know as you know as the rates that. go up again exactly yeah. but um yeah it's it's not going to last for no. very long especially no. with the the pausing of the immigration yeah. that happened during the pandemic and now we're seeing how much we're trying how how many people we're trying to bring yeah. in yeah and we have to house them too yeah so the thing is, is with our prices in the let's talk just GTA. Yeah, is supply. Yeah, there is yes. not enough supply. Yes. And even if it, we kick out some of the investors that you know will have to sell, not. there is so many first-time buyers that are still trying to get in the market. Yeah, and then all the immigration that is coming in yeah. because it was backed up since the last two years. Yeah, that supply is still not going to be enough no. there is going to be enough demand to continue the increase in prices after this cooling yeah uh so yeah. it's it's a good time to buy it, it is it's, it's a good time, time, yeah. time to buy it really is like it, it really is yeah and like yes rates are higher but like housing prices are not insane and like it's yeah. a lot more chill to buy right now I yeah. mean, I mean, housing prices are still insane, <laughs> but at least you're able yeah. to put in a financing condition. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. at least able to not have to, you know, bid on something with 20 to 50 yeah. others. Yeah. Like, yeah, honestly, it was yeah. ridiculous. It was insane. It was. Yes. So it but all <laughs> said everything is Good. Yeah, but it doesn't feel good. It doesn't <laughs> no. feel good. And everyone's but... terrified about rates. Yes. And um, and I'm gonna bring it back to rates because we yes. are talking about. I know. I just suddenly was like, oh my god, we're not talking about the rates at all because it's all but just it's so all together. And these are all the questions that people are asking. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, that's true, and it is true. Um, the other thing that I was gonna say, I just have a couple notes here, so I'm gonna go back to them. <laughs> um, we did this, uh, we talked about, oh, the lower penalties. Oh, one of the right. last things. Yeah, one I of the last things. I forgot to mention that. I was I thinking know. about that when you were talking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I totally. <laughs> I know. I took us into another direction. <laughs> Which is still good. It's all, and like, again, it's all interconnected, but I did want to like, just bring it back to that variable yeah. versus fixed because like, yes, all of those, all of everything we were just talking about is, is valid, um, but, We'll come back to this yeah. is like the difference between variable and fixed and um the pros and cons of it yeah. and again another reason why i love variable rates <laughs> yeah <basically. laughs> is prepayment penalties yeah it ought just in general like never mind what the rates are most like on, on average you're going to be paying less in a prepayment penalty on a variable rate versus a fixed rate yeah whenever 
Like yeah. that's just how it is. It's always cheaper to break a variable rate mortgage than a fixed rate. Yeah, or the same amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, or or the same. But like the fixed rate is can can be significantly higher. Yes. And one of the things that we want to like talk about or especially caution right now is people who are going into a fixed rate at this point where rates are high. Yeah. Or um, have are now asking if they want to lock in yeah. and do they want to extend that lock in to another yeah. five years is the breaking. Like what yeah. what are you going do you know what the next five years looks like? Yeah. And even when's the last time you made a five year plan and it's worked out the way that you <laughs> yeah. literally like, like when did you stick to it? Yeah. Like what's gonna happen? You know, someone might die. Someone, you might want to move. Maybe you hate your neighbors. Like, like literally all of these things. Yeah. Maybe you want to redo your bathroom. You hate your bathroom and you need time to do it. Or you need a new kitchen. I don't know. Yeah. Like, all of these things happen. Um, and even with, like, again, like, with it being a good time to buy, with housing prices going down, if you choose to maybe, like, extend and lock in and then you're like, ooh, I actually think it might be time now to buy a cottage property. And you know what? Prices have gone down again. And you want to take some money out of your house, but you just locked in. Um, so one of the things is like, like which Steph can probably go into more is like, the way that prepayment penalties are calculated on a fixed rate is the differential between your rate and the current rate that's available yeah. on the market. Or a posted rate, or depending the posted rate. on what lender you have. Yeah. Uh, so it can be even higher if they use a posted rate. But, yeah, so uh, if rates go down in like the next three years, four years, and you want to break your mortgage, you're looking at a huge prepayment penalty. Yeah, yeah. Huge. On variable, it's always, always three months interest penalty. And that you can calculate easily. You know exactly what it is. It's not hard to eat it's it's okay whereas a variable rates the last time i fixed had rate. sorry fixed rates yeah, yeah. <laughs> fixed rates the last time um you know i guess yeah during the pandemic fixed rates went down like crazy and mm. three, three prior to people that locked in on the fixed rate i think i saw one of our clients and this is not even on the highest one i I've heard of being in the industry, right? But it was like thirty-six thousand dollars to break the mortgage. Thirty-six thousand dollars, and I think in wow. the like we have like uh, a wow. group that mortgage people talk, and we don't put any names, but we just yeah. give other people information. And I think someone had a client that had fifty k prepayment penalty holy like, shit that ooh, is, is it worth it like, like <laughs> crazy i mean yes those are on the higher end but i've consistently seen from 15 to 25 yeah many times with yeah our clients like that's a more years. normal range like that's yeah. what you're looking at yeah versus you know a variable rate that you know, the penalty might be, you know, $4,000. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it can be huge. And there, huge. there are potentially some ways around it with some lenders, but sometimes you can't get yeah. around it. And sometimes you will have to pay that. Yeah. Um, and even if you're getting around it, sometimes it's just being put back into your mortgage. Yes. So you are paying for it. Yeah. They just are giving just, you a higher rate yeah. than what the competitive rates are at that time. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, yeah, the, it's a big, big risk you're taking when you are doing yeah. the variable. You're taking the risk of yeah. that yeah. prepayment penalty. And and the reality <sighs> is, too, is like if you do have a prepayment penalty, let's say just 20 grand. Yeah. And you were scared with the variable because it's higher and you know you might be paying an extra five grand in interest maybe over the term of yeah. your mortgage yeah but now you have to pay 20 now you're still down 15k yeah, yeah. like it, you're taking that gamble yeah and that's okay if you yeah. want to do that yeah like it, if which not, is i mean even the banks though too like i feel like they set this up specifically to be like 
hey, if you are risk averse and you want to lock it in, then this is what you get. And you know, we're gonna like take everything we can out of you because you're not someone who's willing to play the market and you're not someone who's who's going to be doing anything. So they're going to take what they can. Whereas the variable rate, they're just like, you know, they're, I, I don't know. Like yeah. it, there's something about it that feels like, like you're almost getting rewarded for taking on more risk. But like, but to me, I'm like, there's so much data out there that says no matter what you're saving in a variable rate. So I'm just like, what risk are you taking on? But for some reason, the banks, like there's this feeling I get from the way they set the it up is that not they just, knowing. It's the yeah. not knowing and, and people don't like to not know and but people it, like to budget. Yeah. And if, but I know, feel like why wouldn't the banks like reward people for going into a fixed rate, like a higher rate, like, you know, to me, logically, it would be like, wow. yeah, they're going to a fixed rate. Like, this is amazing. We'll make more money off of these people who don't want to listen to data. Uh, yeah, but, <laughs> but, yeah. But, like, so, like, just logically, when I think it out, like, those are some of the things where I'm like, I just don't get it. Like, why the fixed rate to me seems so bad. But, like, the banks make it so that it is, or the lenders, like, just the standard in general, just, it, it, it's... It's, it's a conundrum. It's a conundrum that I like kind of try to think through because it doesn't really make sense to me because the variable rate, I don't know, I guess, I just, I feel like they would, I don't know. I don't know, I just feel like they should want to put you in a fixed rate. Well, they do. But then why do they make so many downsides? But it, well, no, because they make more money on so a fixed rate. The, the reality is they just know that people want to know what their payment is. Right. So most and people will go into it. most people are risk adverse. Most people would rather know. So they're taking advantage of everyone. Yeah. They know that the clearly, most of the people like, go into a fixed no rate. So sure. Well, well the, I mean, <laughs> you can even tell from the last, you know, six months that I bet your bank has been calling you. Did Scotia call you to not, not Scotia's I great. I love that. Yeah. I love Scotia. I really <laughs> did. I know Scotia's great. But <laughs> all lenders. Yeah. It's just Mercy's with I'm Scotia. I'm with Scotia. That's fine. Yeah. Um, but basically, we have had clients where their banks will call them over mm. the last six months being like, hey, Variable rates are going up. Would you like to lock in? Let me give you the rates. Shiesty. This is shiesty. It, it's just smart business for them. I know, but it's All so shiesty. But they're there to make money. Like the people As that they work, don't already make enough money. But yeah, yes. but but us every. I know. Every, I know. Why? Why I is know. the grocery store increasing I their know. prices over what inflation ah. says? It's because it's all about how do I maximize my profits? And I think that is what it we really need to understand. Yes, is our banks and our lenders are here to, to make, money. make money on us. That is what so, they're making money. Yeah. So they want. They're like, hey. I know that variable rates are going up. So they're going to be making money because rates are going up. But they're also like I'm taking into the scare tactic of like yeah, rates are going like, up. You might as well lock in now. Exactly. And if they know that you lock in, one, you're in a much higher rate yeah. right away. Yeah. So they're, so they're already making, making money. more money. And then they, two, they know that, what is it? It's, uh... How many people is one in four? I don't know what you're gonna. I say. just how many people break their mortgage? My oh, brain is not working. Probably it, like two thirds. Yeah, I I think the average person breaks their mortgage on at the four year mark or three point oh, seven yeah, yeah, year yeah. mark or three point yeah 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 something yeah. like that. Yeah. So the average right. breaks their mortgage before five years. Yeah. So they so, know that likely we will make money right now by putting you in a higher rate and we will likely make money because you'll likely break your mortgage and we'll get and that you'll be making penalty. money for the entire time that you're in a higher rate yeah. than what you would have been in your so, variable rate. And, and that's the thing is like, yes, it, it's good to have these conversations and talk to your broker, talk yeah. to us. Which is, that's what I was going to say. It's like, that's like this, just 
because I, which I wasn't even trying to go yeah. into because it was just like my own, like walking through it in my own head. Yeah. But like, this is definitely a good, like this alone is a good reason why to have a mortgage broker. So every yeah. time your bank calls you, and suggest something, run it by your mortgage broker, yeah. run it by your person and that that is there out. for you. Like, and even if it's not me or Stephanie, like I hope that you have someone yeah. who is an independent mortgage broker that you can talk to about this, who is looking out for your best interest. Because yeah. obviously as we're talking, the yeah. banks aren't. As much as they want you to believe it, as much as, you know, Susie down at the bank that you talk to every week and, and you love so much, is working on for the bank and is working like you know her pay is probably based on how many times she can get someone to lock in yeah, so there's like, lots of incentives out so there many incentives and if you're a, what? an employee of course i'm gonna do that i'm gonna make friends with whoever comes in all the time that's and your gonna, job yeah like, that's what you're supposed to do and and yeah you know it's not on them i'm not mad at susie no. but it's it's about the company maximizing the profits yeah. and whether you lock in or not with a bank we're not making money off of it so yeah we just want to provide you with information yeah. and then talk about what mm -hmm. your next five years will look like i mean we just mm -hmm. spoke to you spoke to a client yeah, today I did. about they want we're thinking about locking in yeah. and then you found out that they might want to do renovations they want, <laughs> might want to buy and like yeah. all these things in the next two years so yeah. why would someone lock in no, if they exactly. want to do these things within the yeah. next two years. And even for him, like throughout that conversation, like this is another thing is like, I want to walk, like at least for me is I want to walk through with you. Like, let's talk through the rationale. At first we were starting with like, okay, two years from now, maybe we'll do a refinance and then maybe we'll run numbers to see what makes sense. And then at the end of it, we were like, oh, maybe a HELOC is better. Like, like if you don't have these conversations and walk through like all the different possibilities and what's out there and options, um, yeah, you Maybe know, you're not just say, yeah. yeah, I will lock it. Yeah. And then, and this is not me getting paid for it. No. This is me just like actually cultivating a relationship with someone so that they will trust that, that I'm here for them. Yeah. You know, even if I like, I'm not, I don't know. Like for me, I, I sleep better at night if yeah. I know that someone's in a better position in, you know, like, I don't know. I just. Yeah, it, it hurts ah. my heart when, when a client comes to me a year after oh they locked in and we didn't talk and then they want to buy and sell or they want to, and, and yeah. maybe they can't go to the same lender. Maybe yeah. they don't qualify with right. that lender. They need to go somewhere else. Like, right. And then I have to look at that prepayment penalty with them. Yeah. And I'm like, I wish I had this conversation with you a year so we ago. We could have talked about it. <laughs> yeah. But like, it, it's happened a mm -hmm. number of times. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it you know, your of relationship course. with your mortgage broker is lifetime. Like until yeah. the moment that you don't own a house anymore, which is probably when you're dead. Yeah. And so it's plenty of times is like, gosh, we have clients because of our dad for years that like just are paying down their mortgage. Like, yeah. like they will probably be done their mortgage, but we consistently are in touch and yeah. talking through these things. If it's only to settle your nerves or to yeah. walk through something together. Yeah. Or to like, have this conversation about variable versus yeah. fixed. Should I, should I like, <clears throat> what do I do in this market? Like what's okay, what's not okay? Should I buy another cottage property? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's like, yeah. Talk it through with your broker. The bank is always there to make money, so they're always going to suggest fixed rates. Yeah. And even know, if your son or daughter works at the bank and they tell you that you should go to the bank, maybe also talk to someone who's independent because I know that your son or daughter or cousin or brother or whatever means well, but also maybe they should talk to an independent mortgage broker too. <laughs> or just an independent person in general for any industry. I'm very pro people versus institutions. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's true. You, you create that relationship and you become mm -hmm. 
a friend or a referral rather than you know another number on a page yeah. where you're gonna work with yeah. someone new in six months from now exactly and I mean like it even goes I mean now we're just very much getting off track yeah. but but I'm like as little as like my mechanic like I can text my mechanic and be like hey there is some noise going on with my car and I'll send him a video and he'll let me know if I should come in or not or like just be like hey am i okay i'm three hours away from toronto will i survive in my car yeah. and you'll be like okay but like just rather that than going to like the honda dealership yeah. and it's joe blow down yeah, the street just because i know every time. i have a honda and a honda dealership knows yeah. how to work with my car and that's safe well you know is it actually yeah i mean <laughs> that's like a whole other conversation yeah. that i feel like we could get into because again yeah. i have very strong opinions on that so like i can get into yeah. that too yeah. maybe that'll be another episode but uh yeah i think point is is yes rates are going up yes, yes it's uncomfortable yes to have these conversations about yeah. locking in and the variable and what works best yeah. for you have those conversations before making a decision yeah um and yeah. and yeah and and it's still a good time to buy it's you know it's not the end of the world it's yeah yes gonna get a little more uncomfortable but we're we're still in a good position strap in and ride the wave baby <laughs> that's the what we're doing and that's what i suggest everyone to do yeah. but yeah at the end of the day um Pro variable, still pro variable. Yeah, I am too, and I hate that. <laughs> I'm in the ethics tree. We like, laugh about it. I feel very unfortunate like, for you. Oh my goodness! But, but there, I just know now. I think it was good for my first mortgage to get it, and like yeah. even with variable rates that are going up, I still would be saving money <laughs> if I had. I, just, a variable just rate, and it's the other thing too about this is my dad. Like since we were children, yes. my dad has always been very yes. pro variable. Like so I know better. Yeah, and that's <laughs> where like I'm not as like with clients. I do understand because yeah. I made that stupid decision. Yes. Yeah. Not, it's not stupid. It's not stupid. It's just a I decision made in the moment decision based on an emotional the, decision. <laughs> yes, and you know I that's. That's what I did. Yeah. And, and that's okay. And that helped relieve some of your stress at the time though. Like yeah. that's, and that's I guess so. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I mean is like, that's why I always say I'm like, if it's going to help you sleep at night, then it is the right decision. Yeah. Yes. You know what you see now that you could have saved money, but in that moment that helps save some stress for you guys. I probably still wouldn't have thought of it though. Honestly, I think just the, the, hell the stress, stress would have had one just like in that exact moment because rates were higher than 3% for so long, mm. for so long. And then True. all of a sudden it was 2.99 and, and then I'm it like, was oh like, my one. God, it's under, <laughs> under 3%. This is the best thing ever. No. And then they continued to go down like <laughs> for the huge. next two years. She locked in literally right before the pandemic. Yeah. Like literally a Fe month. February 2020. Yeah, February 2020. So like, <laughs> bro, I am dumb. Like, <laughs> I know better. Like that's the, I know better. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I, I feel like Steph was ashamed about it because she didn't even tell me until I like know, a month or, oh, or yeah, a year like, into it. So you got your home and I was yeah. like, go very well. <laughs> thing he was like for sure I'm always gonna go variable yeah. but he was like at the time we just had a kid it was our yeah. first house right. we were just starting this he's like See, okay. he's like we need yes. he was like we needed the fix the, the comfortability yeah. of the fixed rate but he was like a hundred percent I was like I know I know now and I know talking with you guys even yeah. from before yeah. that like he would go variable and so it was just like literally the same thing it yeah. was like this process of change that like at the time yeah. he needed that security yeah I would like, and that I just feel so. Which I, I feel, feel like he also so has a high stupid, rate, but. <laughs> but because 
I did know better. And yeah. I've been in the mortgage yeah. industry for years. Shame. Shame. So like, <laughs> I, I have no excuse. Yeah. But again, it is the same. I guess I just needed that comfortability at that time. And, yeah. you know, that's okay. And, and now I also know that, like, you could go with a lender where the payment is stagnant. Like I could yes, have done right. that instead. Yeah. Um. You know, with a variable rate, so you have the comfort comfortability of yeah. pretty much the payment staying yeah. the same, but you get the lower rate. Yeah. So there's lots of options, and you know, yeah. I made yeah. the wrong one for me looking back, but you know, hindsight's yeah. twenty twenty, and you know, I think. I think this was a good lesson for me to learn that yeah. I probably now going forward will never do it again. But if I want variable, then, you know, maybe in the future I might be like, oh, rates are really low. Maybe I'll lock, lock in. in. Lock in. I mean, like, no, I won't do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you were able to lock in your rate at like 1.09 for five years, that'd be great. Yeah. I would probably say go do that. I mean, true, but like at that point in time, what are the variable rates at that time? Probably lower. Yeah, so probably doing that two or however right. many years, like that's but, yeah. the thing is like because people people come at me and they're like, yeah, you know, like if I locked in at one point oh nine, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, I get like right now yes, that's really yeah. good. Like you would have been able to save right. now, but, but like at the start of your mortgage is worth that's true. Paying that's the true. Highest amount of interest. I forget. I get blinded by one percent. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. 
we're not saying don't go into a fixed obviously there are merits to it and there are times when it's necessary um or suggested or what uh, makes you feel comfortable exactly it's, you know what works for yeah. you may not work for me may yeah. not work for you know your sister yeah. and it just yeah and, and that's about. totally fine like i've had these same conversations same data and everything and i do have clients at the end of it who are like yeah that's nice i still want fixed yeah. And that's totally fine. I'm like, yes, do it. Please make your yeah. own decisions. Like yes. that's what I'm here for. I can give you data. Yeah, give you data so that you can make the decision with yeah knowledge and knowing what you're gonna do and feeling comfortable with that. Yeah, and that, yeah. in the end of the day, it's you gotta feel comfortable with your decision. Exactly. Um, and we're just yeah. here to help provide any information. Yeah. So um, that was Musings for Mars. I'm Marissa Kodzi. This is my sister, Steph. And yeah, I hope you learned a lot and that you enjoyed this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have more. We Cause... will definitely have more. There will yeah. be more coming. But yeah. <laughs> Rates. Woo! It's all crazy. It's like, get ready. Yeah. Rates are insane, but you're fine. Don't worry about it. Just ride the wave. Yeah. Ride the wave. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>